So I have two data sets that I'm going to use. The theme of my data sets is the COVID uh, pandemic. The first data set is part of a research paper from the Star Institute, uh, which I think is in Singapore. They monitored tweets being published around the world in the English language from February, March 2020 to January 2021. And then they did NLP processing on those tweets to evaluate their sentiment and the emotions that were expressed in them. There is geographical data associated to the tweets. So we're going to do is we're going to take this set and analyze it from the point of view of emotions and sentiments uh, produced in them. Now, the other data set that I have is a COVID epidemiological data set from Our World in Data, the OWID source. This is pure epidemiological data, number of cases, number of deaths, number of hospitalizations, and so on, in all of the countries around the world. So the goal is to try and see to what extent we can correlate the sentiment analysis of tweets to the actual epidemiological data. I want to put them on the same graph and see what jumps out. And that'll be kind of uh, fun. I will show you what it's like to load data into these different platforms. So let's go. All right, so let's start with C3.ai X Machina. I'm gonna start by just laying the groundwork for what is the core UX and UI principle of each of those platforms. So everything you do in C3.ai is done through a node. So you basically place a node on your canvas. Each of those nodes has an input and an output, or some inputs and some outputs, depending on the node type. It takes in something as input, it does some kind of process, and then it makes something else available as output, which you can use as an input for another node. Everything is done through those nodes. To load a CSV in Ex Machina, you're going to simply place a CSV node on your canvas. You're going to then configure it, dropping your CSV file in it, and uh, letting the node do the work of loading the CSV file. Once you have loaded a file and uh, waiting for it to, to appear, it took me about 10-15 minutes, I think, to load a 130 million record CSV. The performance is actually quite good. A key core operating concept behind nodes in C3.ai, in Ex Machina, I should say, uh, uh, is the fact that you have to run the node in order for the output to be produced. So it's not like you configure your node, click OK, and then everything is done. You have to decide when you run the actual process in your node. So once we've loaded our uh, CSV file, we can uh, run it in order to see the table that is a result of this uh, CSV loading. Now, you see there at the top of the screen your environment monitor. C3.ai is an in-memory platform, so therefore whenever you start your environment, it actually ramps it up into memory. The fact is that the more nodes and the more stuff is on your canvas, the slower the actual interface becomes. Every time you get into a node, you get out of it, you, you click something and so on, sometimes it will take up to a minute or two to just refresh the canvas. Ex Machina has a lot of issues related to the performance of the actual UI, but the performance of the processing itself is actually uh, really pretty good. On the pro side, we have fast in-memory processing. You can just launch things. You have a large environment available with all the resources up and running behind it and you don't have to worry about that at all. It's like a purely as a service platform. You can load your data, don't worry about how big it is. You have the nice canvas and node UI. I like it. You can place things where you want, you can move things around. There is something to be said for this node as a processing unit, which has an input and an output, which is all contained. It makes for a nice compact view of things. It's quite enjoyable to, to use, to move things around and, and so on, it's pleasant. You can load arbitrary data sizes in there. It's not going to put any roadblocks in your way. It's just going to do the work behind the scenes. C3.ai was really the platform that was making it easy for me to have a large data set that I wanted to do something with afterwards. The simple ability to be able to drag and drop a five gigabyte file directly into the node and just not worry about it. That was very appreciable, it has to be said. On the con side, you have the fact that your data sets are not directly accessible and manipulable, right? You have to go into your process node in order for your data set to be recomputed so that it can be displayed. You can tell that this is a, a young platform. The UI doesn't perform very well. It has obviously non-asynchronous stuff going on, so it's kind of freezing until everything is done and you don't even know what it's doing because all you did was click outside of a node. That's a real drag. That, I must say, offsets the benefit that you get from being able to load arbitrarily large uh, data sets. They need to work on the fact that it's nice to have a very powerful platform behind the scenes, but if your UI is getting in the way of actually getting the benefits of fast processing and things like that, well, then it's not a benefit. There you go. That's the pros and cons. Uh, now we're going to look at the Taiku, and you're going to see that it's 
both very similar and extremely different. It's very interesting to, um, to look at the paradigms. Um, so let's go. So now let's look at how Dataiku addresses this problem. In Dataiku, you have also this concept of chaining of things, but the core object is the data set. The data set is what you do things to, and in between those data sets, you have what they call recipes. So it's data sets and actions that you do on data sets. It's very similar to the nodes of C3.ai, but the data set centric UX rather than the process centric UX changes the relationship uh, to the software in a way that is very interesting. Let's try and load a CSV and just see what happens. You have a whole array of data set types that you can create. I click upload your file, select a CSV and drop it to the uh, interface that I have. This is a small uh, CSV. That's one of the big differences between the Taiku and Ex Machina. If I'd wanted to upload that 130 million row CSV, it would have been difficult, if not impossible, in this instance. We'll get back to that in a later uh, video. We upload our file and immediately we can visualize the data set. So there's no concept of having to build the data set. It's there. You can look at it. However, the reason why Dataiku can do that, even on very large data sets, is that every time you have a data set, they will load a sample of that data set and display the contents of that sample. You can configure the uh, size of your sample when you want to view your data set, but we will get back to that later. The key point here is that there is a feel in this UX of always looking at your data set. Immediately you see the structure of it, you can see the schema, you can see the, ma the main values and, and things like that. And that makes the logic and the cognitive load, the number of activities you have to perform, it feels much lighter. And also in our head, at least in my head, I have data sets and I do things to data sets. I don't have processes to which I plug in inputs and outputs. So. Here we have the pros and cons for Dataiku. The Dataiku UX logic is more in line with the way I understand what I'm doing. There is a kind of a automatic layout of the data sets and uh, recipes, which on the other hand is a little bit clunky, right? You can't just move things around in a way that is easy to customize. Still, the natural layout is pretty good. It doesn't detract from being productive. And in fact, maybe it even removes questions that you have to ask yourself. It's just laid out for you and you can keep going. The sampling logic also is key and it supports this kind of fluidity of the UX. The Reiku has a quite different way of dealing with data sets and we'll, we'll get back to that later so there, that's the Dataiku fundamental paradigm. For this video, we will only uh, cover these two platforms. In the next video, we will cover also SageMaker, Good Data, S3, and QuickSight. Maybe not in one video, we'll see how long it takes. I hope that gives you already a sense of between C3X Machina and uh, Dataiku, which is the platform which resonates most with you. But we're just getting started. There's a lot more to be said about all of these platforms. And this is going to take us quite a few weeks to cover the whole data value chain that I'm using as a basis for this analysis. Let me know if there's ways in which the way I'm dealing with this is not addressing some of the questions that pop into your head. Talk to you soon.